April 27th of this year, we opened the new Kosciusko Bridge to traffic, uh, moved all the traffic off the old bridge. It was a 1939 old steel truss structure. The new bridge is performing beautifully, and now it's time to take down the old bridge. Now we're full swing into the demolition, planning and execution. We have about a mile and a half of existing bridge to be taken down and roughly 15,000 tons of steel that eventually will come down and have to get processed. The first phase is taking down our main span portion of the bridge, which uh, includes some removal of some deck section, some sidewalk section, um, and then eventually lowering our main span down with strand jack system down onto uh, barges to ship out. Then we move into our approach phase uh, where we'll do a controlled demolition of the approaches. Essentially, steel support legs are erected under the bridge. Uh, the weight of the bridge is transferred onto those columns, and uh, then a series of strands will eventually take the load of the bridge. Then the strands will get lowered foot by foot uh, over a very controlled process for about six hours. It'll land on a barge, and the barge will take it and float it out the creek to a scrapyard in New Jersey. There has been nothing standard about taking this bridge down. The existing bridge itself weighs about 5 million pounds. So we have to do this in a very controlled manner um, over the course of a day, combined with the fact that Newtown Creek is only about 12 feet deep. There's not a lot of clearance for barges of this size and a bridge of this size to get out. So that's a, that's a big challenge also. And something we put a lot of time and effort into planning. Tolerances are so tight across the board that um, you know everything has to be precisely where it's supposed to be, otherwise the system doesn't work. So the jacking towers they have to be plumb within a half an inch. The uh, the braces they, none of them can be off by more than one degree. The strand jacks have to be perfectly plumb. The rods that we use to transfer the bridge originally have to be perfectly plumb, perfectly centered on the on the bearings, and nothing can be out of level more than a sixteenth of an inch. In the, the final preparation, uh, prepping the, the main span to be lowered onto the barges down below. Behind me, we affectionately refer to it as the command center. So this entire system is run by a single laptop and a single smart box that allows all the strand jacks to talk to each other, all the power packs to talk to each other, lets us know how the loading is, making sure that, that the bridge is coming down level and there's no uneven loading at all. Waiting down below in the creek will be our two barges with uh, four tugboats positioning them. The total lowering is about 100 and 110 feet. Uh, we'll get it very close. The tugs will, will push the barges around so we can, there's four shoring towers downstairs that we're going to land this thing on. Once we touch down, we'll start to tie the bridge down to the barge itself. Some of the steel will have to cut out, right? so there's a lot of torch cutting involved. So it's actually going to sit here overnight, and then uh, around dawn again, we'll come back out, we'll finish the lashing, and then the tugs will navigate the barges out through Newtown Creek. There's a couple of movable bridges that have to open up to take the barges down the East River, around the, the tip of Manhattan uh, to Jersey City, and that's where uh, they'll dismantle it over the next four to six weeks. About two months ago, we lowered the main span of the bridge over the creek. Now, there are 20 remaining spans, ranging from 130 to 240 foot in length. And using explosives, we are going to bring these spans down to the ground to be processed and recycled. One of our main focuses was the safety of our workers. Uh, using the explosives eliminates thousands of man hours of very, very dangerous work at height for our iron workers, burning and preparing and lifting and taking down pieces one at a time. The first thing we did is we took the barrier, the center line barrier off the bridge, and then we milled all the asphalt off. 
that's done basically for weight. The less weight we have falling, the less impact to the underground utilities or nearby buildings. And then we took some, the overhanging sidewalks. So we're able to drop the span straight down and avoid hitting something that's very close to it as it falls. Prior to dropping uh, the spans, another thing that we have to do is we have to set up uh, concrete or soil berms, depending on our location. Basically, the concrete is used in the areas that we want to keep the bridge higher and the soil and the bridge lower. So those berms are both done to soften the blow, lessen the impact, the vibrations to the ground, and also uh, let the bridge you know, tilt away from uh, any nearby obstructions. We have weakened the steel structure. We have created uh, two transverse slots, uh, an intermediate point on the bridge, and uh, we have applied charges to uh, the steel structure, to the, to the trusses, so that the linear shape charges instantaneously sever the leftover weakened structure. At that point, the uh, bridge structure will be free to fall, will have zero uh, connection, and gravity will just perform the rest. It will allow the structure to come down straight in the middle. So we're getting ready for the uh, implosion uh, of the bridge this weekend, and um, we've come through a lot. We've gone through a lot to get to this point, and uh, the anticipation's building. Uh, we're felling the whole bridge all at one time. There are two separate detonation sites, but both will go down at the same time in the Queens and Brooklyn side. We are uh, approximately 40 hours away. We will regroup in specific points, and we'll have to run through a few checklists. We'll inspect the area a couple of times. The blaster will perform his last few operations that have to happen just before. And then from a safe distance, everybody will uh, be shielded um, outside the exclusion zone, inside a command center, at a master point. The New York City Highway Police Department will shut down traffic and, and there'll be a countdown until they blast and then uh, sequentially, each one of these uh, spans is gonna be dropped down, one right after the other, you know, a split second apart, they're gonna drop down onto uh, berms on the ground. First, you know, to be involved in the, the first cable stay bridge in New York, uh, it's, there's so many aspects of this job that are unique. Uh, you'll never see another bridge get get blasted and dropped. There's so many once in a once in a career experiences on this job. It's been amazing. It really has. That sense of fulfillment, I think, that all the hard work for both us as management and for the craft out there doing the work, that it's it's really going to mean a lot to see that all our hard work is paid off. Well, for me, uh, being a young engineer, it's nothing I've ever seen before. So. It's, uh, it's not something you learn in school, and um, I'll definitely be able to tell my kids one day about this. Being involved with this job has been a bit of a dream come true for a New Yorker and a builder. You know, to build the first big, beautiful bridge in New York City since the Verrazano back in the 1960s is a dream come true in itself. But then to come together with our team, you know, Skanska, Kiewit, and Echo, and the great folks we had on this job, you know, it was really an absolute pleasure. You know, the team worked together, overcame obstacles, and really delivered a fantastic product for our client and for the New York metro area, for the community.